Hello world and welcome to Hacks. In today's video we're going to be doing some more Portswigger Web Security Academy. We are looking at SQL injection attack listing the database contents on non-Oracle databases. Let's have a look at the requirements for the lab. SQL injection attack listing the database contents on non-Oracle databases. This lab contains an SQL injection vulnerability in the product category filter. The results from the query are returned in the application's response so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables. The application has a login function and the database contains a table that holds usernames and passwords. You need to determine the name of the table and its columns and, yeah, and, co and columns it contains. Then retrieve the contents of the table to obtain the username and password of all users. To solve this lab, log in as the administrator user. Okay, let's access the lab. So, yeah, we need to take the product categories filter, append our SQL query onto it, get the information or the table names from the information schema, then dump the tables to get the username and password for the administrators. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head into Burp Suite, we're going to turn our intercept on, and then we're going to click on one of the product categories filters. Let's click accessories and jump back into Burp. And you can see there, it's got the filter on there, so that's doing some sort of select command where product equals accessories, and then we're just going to send that to repeater. If we jump into repeater and not options, you can see that we can now modify the content. So I'm just going to do plus union plus select plus no. I'm going to try sending that first of all, and this should help us determine how many columns there are. So we get a 500 internal server error. So it does indicate that the server is vulnerable to SQL injection or that parameter is vulnerable to SQL injection. We just haven't got the query right. So it's likely that there's another column, which we can assume from the layout of the actual website. You know, you've got a bold column and a plain text column. So if I do no again, comment that out and send that, we now get a 200 message indicating that the response is okay now what we can do is we can see which of these columns support text so in the null we're just going to change this to test so we can see that that column does indeed support data so we can do the same on this one here just to check if this one also supports um, text data fantastic so what do we need to do now well we need to get the username and password of the administrator user. And in order to do that, we need to get the name of the columns from the database or from the information schema. And in order to do that, we can do union select plus table underscore name, because we want the, the names of the tables containing those columns. And then we're going to add no. So we're telling it to put the table names into the first column. Then we're saying no for the second column. And then we're saying from plus information underscore schema, which is a default table on MySQL databases. Let's spell that right. Dot tables. And then we'll try sending that. Okay, we've got a 200 OK, so let's render that and see if we can get the table names. Brilliant, so you can see here, let's close the inspector quickly. We have all the table names for the database. Um, let's go back to raw so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, and now we need to find the one with the users and passwords in it. So we've got a users table there by the looks of things. So let's try and grab that, shall we? So I'm just going to copy that to my keyboard. And then I'm going to do union select. And I want to select column name. And then I want to keep a null for the second one. And I want to 
still continue to query the information schema, but this time I want to query the columns. Where table underscore name equals users um that users table now hopefully if we run that should be able to render that again and that doesn't look to ah okay yes we have it's not rendering the full page for some reason but if we scroll down we get a list of column names okay yeah so that makes sense so we got the username table and the column table uh, sorry the username and the password columns from the users table from the users yqacc table so what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to make a quick note of those And now we're going to modify our query again to get the data from those columns. So we're going to say union select and then in the first column we're just going to put the username column select and then in the second column I didn't need that there we're going to put the passwords and then we're going to say from our users table which is there and then we should be able to just comment out the rest of the query uh, from there so we're saying using this parameter we're doing a union select username column password column from users table let's hope this works and you can see we've got a 200 okay and we should get some usernames and passwords We've got a user called Wiener. Um, what I will do is I will sh try and show the response in the browser. Let's turn proxy intercept off. So now we can get the administrator user and password. And we should just be able to log in. So, fantastic! We completed the lab. So that's it. That's um, how you solve the lab. I hoped it helped you solve the lab. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Maybe like and subscribe to the uh, to the channel. And yeah, kind regards.